I will turn it over to Spencer Williams and Jack Vander I think Spencer, you're starting it off. Spencer is Retirement Clearinghouse's founder, president, and CEO. And Retirement Clearinghouse is a specialized provider of portability and consolidation services for America's mobile workforce and has serviced more than one million job-changing participants during uh, Spencer's nine-year tenure with the company. So take it away, Spencer. Thanks, Harry, <clears throat> and uh, good morning, everybody. It's always exciting to lead off. Um, as uh, Harry said, I'm Spencer Williams. Um, what we're going to do this morning is actually a, a bit of a reprisal and an ad. Uh, for those of you who attended last year's EBRI Policy Forum at this time of year, uh, we presented a first set of findings that we had worked uh, deeply with EBRI. Uh, we called it the Auto Portability Simulation, and you might remember some uh, uh, animation of uh, funny little colored Lego figures crossing the screen at a high rate of speed, which was our way of illustrating to folks um, the effect of job changing that's going on in the retirement system today with a specific focus on job changers who have less than $5,000 in their account uh, at the time that they change jobs. So today, I'm happy to be uh, kind of moving the ball forward uh, from a couple of perspectives. My job today is actually sort of be Jack's straight man. And he's advised me to keep him on a short tether. Um, I know you all know that, that Jack uh, has had some back issues. And uh, so he's, he's in good shape this morning. If he starts singing happy songs from his pain meds, uh, I'm, I've been instructed to sort of grab the rope and pull him back in. But uh, I doubt that'll happen with Jack. Um, so, so my role today here is, uh, as I said, a little bit of a setup. Going to kind of kind of keep it tight. Um, what I like to say about uh, auto portability when we're first introducing the topic to folks, did that come up OK? Good. <clears throat> is that the kind of the pillars that hold up auto portability are experience and research. And as a business, uh, as Harry said, we, we've been in the business of helping folks who are transitioning into new employment and transitioning out of their employment purely from a retirement plan perspective for about 10 years now, okay? Um, auto portability represents, if you will, a, a new or next generation of, of what we're trying to do. And is, I, the idea behind it is to take the benefits of, of retirement plan portability and apply them on a large scale with technology, okay? But I won't go too much into the uh, experience side right now. I'd like to talk about the research. So the numbers you see on the screen um, are, are simply um, our best effort at pulling together um, in the aggregate, the effects of what we now call the mobile workforce, okay? So this is the underlying dynamic, okay, that we're, we're trying to solve. And that underlying dynamic is very simple. People change jobs. Well, as it turns out, lots of people change jobs, and they change jobs often, okay? And the way that our retirement system is constructed today is, you know, we have limited help for people when they change jobs. Okay, so in particular, I'm going to focus on job changers with small accounts. That's largely what's represented on this screen. And let's just stick in the, the first column that says less than $5,000, okay? And I'll explain to you the numbers just so you can get an idea of the magnitude of the issue that, that we're all trying to deal with um, so that then when we apply some of the principles of auto portability, and I give you an update, you, you can see this is not a trivial issue that we're dealing with. All right. So yes, these are the real numbers. Um, so less than 5,000. There are about 5.3 million people on an annual basis who have less than $5,000 at the time they separate from their job in their 401k. Okay. It's a big number. Okay. And as you can see, you know, the total number of job changers with 401ks, we estimate this is a 2016 basis. And again, EBRI research, um, underlies virtually all of these numbers here, okay? So, so Jack and the team have done some special modeling and, and some special investigation into the CRI database and those types of things to help us come up with these numbers. This is a snapshot. But we would estimate that on a 2016 basis, almost 15 million people with a 401k 
or defined contribution type account will change jobs. Okay, so what's going on? Let's go back to that first column, less than $5,000. Today, what we see is about 54% of those people cash out immediately at the time that they change jobs. Okay, so that's a big number, right? That's 2.9 million people every year who are taking their retirement dollars, and as we'll see in a couple of minutes, generally um, when they're young, low wage, and a disproportionate number of folks are minorities in this category, and they're paying taxes and penalties and losing the value, you know, the future value of that small account, it's a small account, um, for reasons that we'll discuss in a minute, okay? This is fast leakage. For those of you who recollect what we did last year, we, we you probably all know this, but we sort of identified what we call slow leakage. It's a secondary phenomenon, which is even of the uh, 2.4 million people that didn't cash out immediately, over the next several years, an additional 30 odd percent of the, of the full accounts will go. So what's happening today is roughly 85 out of every 100 people in this segment of the market are cashing out their retirement, okay? Between fast leakage and slow leakage. Does that make sense to everybody? You know, and, and we all know it. We just be, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of understanding slow leakage. We have a pretty good handle on fast leakage at this point. So this is the size of the issue, okay? And as you can see, even when you get up to an account that has less than $15,000, okay, we have a something like over almost 50% of all of the job changers have less than $15,000. And you might ask why we chose that limit. Um, as we did the simulation work last year, uh, a couple of the, the very largest financial service providers, record keepers, you know, kind of got a handle on this segment called the less than $5,000 and asked us to investigate, okay, what's going on in these next two segments at 10 and 15. And we found pretty much the same picture going on there. But I'll give you one reference point. If you look at all of the people with less than $15,000 at the time they changed jobs, the mean account balance is $4,600, okay? So by almost any definition, these are, these are all small accounts. Um, I won't get out ahead of ourselves. You know, auto portability in its design is to work on the less than $5,000 segment. So I'll pause for a second. Making sense, you got a size of the, size of the uh, challenge that we're dealing with here. Um, so now let's just, let's just talk a little bit about um, what auto portability is so that we have a grounding when Jack gets up and, and uh, describes the, the deep research and modeling that Ebri has done in what he's taken to calling the auto portability scenario. We know what it is that we're talking about here, all right? So, First things, um, you know, research pin findings pinpoint portability as an effective means to combat leakage. So, so the story here is one we're all very familiar with at this point in time, or, or should be anyway, which is there's a, there's a couple of urban legends out there around cash outs and leakage, okay? One of the urban legends is that it's a small dollar amount and nobody cares and that's why people are cashing out, okay? There's some validity to that. The bigger urban legend is that people are cashing out because they need the funds for an emergency, okay? You can blow that one away. We, we did research, many of you are familiar with Boston Research Technologies. We did a very large study, we surveyed like 5,000 people and discovered that while something like 37% of the population that's, that admitted that they had cashed out, right? large or small accounts, said, I took the money for an emergency. The other 63% said, you know, had a variety of reasons, the biggest one of which was it was just too darn hard to move the money and it didn't seem material to me, okay? So we have a very large segment of the population that is uh, grossly underserved in terms of their ability to easily retain their savings, okay? And preserve them, 
All right? So that, that's the research findings that underlie auto portability. So auto portability is simply a mechanism to counter that. Okay? It's a mechanism to say, I'm going to create, just like auto enrollment, I'm going to create, we are going to create a new default path. All right? And the default path is that we're going to help you find your new employer plan when you change jobs. And we're going to communicate to you, just like we do in auto enrollment, we're going to communicate to you that we actually don't want you to do anything when you change jobs. Okay? We don't want you to take an action that you will regret later, which is another research finding. The level of regret is just very high for people who cash out and then sort of realize the consequences later. Okay? Um, but in any case, it, so auto portability takes uh, 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 an actually very common familiar technology and applies it specifically to people who are changing jobs in, in our world, in the 401k world. That technology is electronic records matching. I would gain say that virtually all of you have some form of electronic records matching in your purse or your wallet on you today. Okay? Your credit cards, your debit cards. It's a form of electronic records matching. It matches the vendor that you just purchased something from and you and your bank. Okay? In this case, we have particular um, circumstances where we have multiple accounts and we use electronic rec records matching to verify that we have the same person and that we can deliver um, one account to the other and consolidate them. The end point of auto portability is by design my current employer's plan. Okay? So I'm a younger person, lower wage, I'm changing jobs, okay? And we're going to help you keep that money by putting a, a system in place, if you will, a network in place. This is the very complex part of it. <laughs> it's not as simple as it sounds. But the simplicity for the participant, for the account holder, is don't do anything. We will scan the world and find your new employer plan. And when we find it, we're going to ask for your consent. You're going to say, that makes a lot of sense to me. Right? And we're going to move the money to your new employer plan. So let's talk a bit about the public policy benefits because they're uh, manifest and enormous. Okay? So, you know, the first one is we reduce leakage. So in the same way we got a big jump in plan participation when we introduced auto enrollment, we would anticipate the same type of quantum leap in a reduction of, of leakage, although we know it'll take time to adopt across the industry and that type of thing. So, you know, these things all take time. But at a personal level, we know that we can change the behavior of the individual by giving them a default path. Okay? So in addition to uh, reducing leakage, of course, the, the flip side of that coin is we're now preserving your savings. We're putting you into the capital formation part of our economy where over the next X number of years, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever it is, those savings now can kind of benefit from what Einstein called the, what did he call it, the second greatest law of nature, which is compound earnings, right? You know, that's the principle behind this. You take $5,000 today, it's $50,000, you know, 30 years from now, essentially. Jack, don't check my math. I know he's going to his calculator right now, okay? Um, you know, so you have this incubation effect of small accounts. It's, uh, it's a fascinating effect, and, and Jack and he re researched that as well. The incubation notion being, you know, small accounts aren't really helpful to anybody, okay? And the proliferation of small accounts across the industry is actually, actually kind of stunning. I don't have that on the top of my head, but there's a bunch of them out there, as in tens of millions that are sitting out there, very uneconomical, and a very large part of the, that population has an account somewhere else. So the, again, the fundamental principle is I, I move my money with me. That's principle one as I move jobs. Principle two is I'm consolidating as I go along here. So I have all my stuff in one place. Okay? Um, so we actually reduce small accounts. And then finally, you know, this is what employer plans are for, right? I mean, you think about 
I mean, you all are familiar, so I won't go through the litany of the benefits of employer plans from purchasing power to fund selection to fiduciary umbrellas to, you know, to all of those types of things, which is why the, the, the key outcome for auto portability is employer plan based. Okay? Small accounts, keep them under the umbrella of the employer plan. Over the, the last 12 months, um, we've done some research on segments of the population and uh, be happy to share those findings with anybody. I don't want to get off track there, but of course, almost by definition, small accounts are associated with low wage folks, right? Almost by definition, not, not 100%, but you know, you think younger ages. And then we found a very significant, um, some research that uh, Ariel um, and uh, Aon Hewitt had done a couple years back. Uh, particularly acute uh, and large disproportional segment of these small accounts belong to minorities and African Americans. So we, we did some research in there as well. Happy to share that with anyone. Okay. We already talked a little bit about uh, the relationship or the, the behavioral uh, finance relationship between auto enrollment and auto portability, you know, employing the same principles of, of the autos in auto portability. Okay. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of support. Um, I, I saw Shai somewhere in the room. The Bipartisan Policy Center was one of them there, Shai. Hey, Shai. And, um, and even the Arista Advisory Council at its last session, its session that wrapped up in November, uh, was making recommendations around increasing uh, portability benefits and, uh, frankly, the need for a, an industry clearinghouse to help manage the process. So the basic story is, when you start uh, flying records from 5 million people a year between the service providers, essentially, um, you, you need something to manage that process. Think of it as an air traffic control system, right? I think we'd all, we all feel a little bit better when we land over in DCA that there's someone who's guiding the plane so two don't land on the same runway at the same time, particularly the one I'm in, right? Um, it's the same concept is that you have to have a process to manage millions of records. Because we all know when people change jobs, they don't immediately show up in their next 401k or in their next employer plan. There are all sorts of time uh, issues that we have to deal with. So you can imagine three years into this thing, you know, several millions of records at any moment in time, you know, that are being examined and hopefully um, located and matched. Uh, but there's a lot of support, including up on uh, Capitol Hill. Um, we're still working with labor. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, auto portability as a solution for small accounts, okay? Another point we'd like to just lay out there for everybody, auto portability is not the, the end, it's not even the beginning of portability benefits. If you actually, if, if you want to know where portability benefits are extremely successful today, you should simply look at the IRA market, the rollover IRA market, okay? Anybody who is eligible, okay, or attractive as a client for an IRA provider will be given all the service they need to open up that rollover IRA. That's a good thing. What we found was that there was no, no similar method to deal with the smaller accounts right now because they're simply not attractive economically as standalone accounts. And last uh, but not least, uh, before I turn it over to Jack, um, uh, auto portability actually goes live here on July 1st, okay? Um, so the story, um, those of you who know the story, I'll just fill in a couple of cracks. Uh, one of the clients that we've worked with for 10 years now is Hospital Corp of America. It's a very large hospital services company, you know, 250,000 employees, 220,000 um, people in their plan. Um, they, hire and, uh, they hire about 50,000 people a year, okay, and about that number leave employment at Hospital Corp of America. And so the, the experience piece of, of auto portability is between they and all of our other clients, you know, we've been, we've been working with these populations for 10 years now. We do it on a largely manual basis today, okay? Um, either rolling people into the HCA plan, voluntary benefit, okay? Or people who are leaving, we take them through their options. So we're the distribution agent for Hospital Corp of America. So we have a lot of experience with all the different flavors, demographics, account sizes, 
and all those types of things. And what we're trying to do is take that experience and apply some technology and scale to it, particularly for the small segment population. So here's the story. I just mentioned we've been doing this for Hospital Corp of America for 10 years. We, we administer Safe Harbor IRAs at Retirement Clearinghouse. We've got a couple hundred thousand of them from all of our customers, 25,000 plans, that type of thing. Last fall, one of our, our uh, execs had this brainstorm. He said, hey, we've got all these Safe Harbor IRAs over here. I wonder, you know, we're, and we're working on auto portability and, you know, trying to create a critical mass and that kind of stuff. He said, I wonder if any of these accounts are actually people who are over here in the Hospital Corp of America plan. So we never thought of that question before, so we, so we checked it out because, you know, of course, we're linked into Hospital Corp of America. And lo and behold, it turns out that as of about two weeks ago when we ran the pilot on this, there are about 2,600 people who have accounts in both places just within Hospital Corp of America. So the story is mostly they worked at Hospital Corp of America, left the job, got rolled into a Safe Harbor IRA that we administer, you know, took another job, and then came back and they got rehired by Hospital Corp of America some years later, right? And so we, we've actually worked with their record keeper conduit to build what I call the last mile of technology, all right? And, and auto portability will go live literally within the ecosystem called HCA um, on July 1st with their record keeper and the technology. So we'll be, um, uh, you, we know from the pilot piece of this that there's 2,600 accounts. Uh, we'll be doing this on an affirmative consent basis. So we'll match the accounts and then we'll send notice off to the, con to the participant and say, hey, we've got both of your accounts here. Would you like us to move it into the, the HCA 401k plan? And if you would, please call us, or you can come on and, and give us your consent uh, through technology, website, voice response, those types of things, or you can call us any way you want to do it. And so over the summer, because um, this will take time for everybody to respond, we'll have the, match, we'll have the matches instantaneously, um, but people won't respond quickly. But over the summer, we'll be reaching out to these folks in various ways and saying, would you like us to consolidate your accounts? And we'll be publishing those results probably after Labor Day sometime when we've had a good 90 days of this going on. So, so the, uh, the theory or the concept of, of auto portability now becomes a reality, on a, admittedly on a small scale. That's a good way to start, okay? <laughs> Trust me, when you talk about millions of accounts and records, it's really good to start small. Um, and so, you know, we'll hope to be back at some point in time to talk about those results or we'll, we'll pu publish them. So that's kind of the landscape for auto portability. Um, I'll, I'll introduce Jack by saying um, kind of along this journey that we've been taking with Employee Benefit Research Institute, um, we asked a question one day. We said, you know, Ibri, if there was perfect portability in the system, meaning the only leakage was hardship withdrawals and, and we figured out how to keep loans intact as people change jobs, what would that all look like? And that is uh, the cue for Jack to get up and talk and to talk about the latest research that uh, Ebri has performed on portability. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>